supermodels, private planes, music, Pablo Escobar's island. There's a whole bunch of things that an entrepreneur can learn from the Fire Festival disaster, and I've got them all right here. Eight lessons for you. Hey guys, it's Trey. Welcome to Money Growth Academy, where we demystify entrepreneurship, simplify business strategies, and multiply your earnings. Today, we're going to talk about Fire Festival. Now, you should know something about this. If not, you've probably been hiding under a rock. You can check it out on Hulu. They've got a documentary on it called Fire Fraud, and then Netflix also just released their own version of it, which is called The Greatest Party That Never Happened. I advise you watch them both. They're both kind of the same, but they've got different takes and different people in there. Overall, the story is the same, what they're getting at. If you don't know about Fire Festival, all you need to really know is that it was a luxury music festival, okay? Uh, it was supposed to be the top of the line, kind of like a Coachella, but even more luxurious. And it was promoted by the world's top supermodels. So like Haley Baldwin, Kendall Jenner, um, all these women who have such influence on social media is promoted heavily by them. Um, the tickets range from anywhere from $1,500 all the way up to $25,000. And to just give you a taste of how successful these supermodels were at marketing this thing, within 24 hours of launch, 95% of tickets available were all sold. Now, the purpose of this entire thing was a guy named Billy McFarland um, and Jaw Rule the Rapper, I'm sure you've heard that name before, they created this app, all right? And this app or booking platform allowed just regular people, the general public, to book you know music artists or celebrities for their own personal events. So a great concept in general because it hadn't been done and a way to kind of democratize uh, booking agencies. But the downfall to this entire platform was they decided to use Fire Festival, which was going to be this music festival, to draw attention to the app. In theory, a great idea, but we're going to get into why it was a terrible idea and why it didn't work and ultimately why Fire has failed. So the first lesson to learn was the need to establish clear communication. Now, in both documentaries, they do a really good job of showing there was no communication whatsoever between the fire development team back in New York and the team that was on the ground in the Bahamas trying to get this festival going. Um, and a lot of that, Billy himself, Billy McFarland, the kind of founder and movement of this, uh, he didn't communicate clearly with his team at all. He talked kind of about grand visions, but he never got into the nitty gritty details of assigning tasks and roles for people. Um, and the team in the Bahamas, they absolutely had no idea what they were doing. And as I mentioned, the team in New York had no idea what even was going on in the Bahamas. So this whole company, you have all this confusion in between them. So you can kind of see the need for clear communication. So the lesson is a clear communication strategy that aligns with your organizational structure is critical for your success. Everyone on board needs to know what's going on. You know, whether if you have different departments or segments within your company, Everyone needs to know what's going on. They need to understand the overall vision as well as where the direction's coming from and what tasks or jobs they need to complete. So the second lesson to take out of Fire Festival is your customers expect you to deliver on what you promise them. So to give you an example, Fire Festival promised partying on Pablo Escobar's island, a private jet to commute you from Miami to the Bahamas, gourmet food, supermodels, luxury accommodations, top musicians and concerts, they didn't deliver on one single of those promises. Not one, guys. So the lesson here is as an entrepreneur, we're told to dream big, have these great visions, shoot for the stars, which is great advice, but you've got to follow through if you're going to promise something, especially if you already have paying customers on your role. So before making promises you can't keep, create a plan of your overall vision. Then what you're going to do is break that vision down into smaller segments and then see what it takes to achieve those smaller segments that will ultimately lead to your vision. So if you figure out what you can realistically deliver, then you can go above and beyond and deliver that amazing experience for your customers. But first, you know, really key in on what you can realistically deliver, promise them that, then you know, go above and beyond and they'll be very thrilled and content with you. But you can't come out the gate promising all these things for them for example, all these features or benefits of your product and you can't deliver on any of them. So that's something to really keep in mind, guys, um, is just really focusing on under promise but over deliver. Okay, guys, before we move on, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and hit that like button over there so you guys can become part of the Money Growth 
Academy community. So you guys can grow with us and you can see the content that we're pushing out weekly for you guys. So the third lesson out of all this is to recognize your weaknesses and surround yourself with experts. So the perplexing thing about this festival isn't that Ja Rule, a rapper, and Billy McFarlane, computer programmer, decided to throw a music festival. The perplexing thing about this whole situation is they decided to run things themselves rather than surround themselves with a team of experts. Most of the people brought on had no event planning at all. That's crazy to think that you would bring in people that don't even know what they're doing in this situation. So the lesson here overall is a great entrepreneur or a leader, they've got to recognize their weaknesses. And you've got to fill in those weaknesses or those gaps with experts, with teams that know how to do that or individuals that can guide you to where you need to be. So as Michael Dell says, I love this quote, he says, try never to be the smartest person in the room. And if you are, I suggest you invite smarter people or find a different room. So surround yourself with experts, guys. You don't need to know everything. You just have to surround yourself with people who know everything. The fourth lesson in all of this is to know your numbers and stick to those numbers. The crazy thing about this entire thing is Ja Rule and Billy McFarlane, they decided to launch a campaign. Now, they had already paid Kendall Jenner $250,000 to promote this event before they had even figured out, you know, which island they were gonna do this on. Did the island have infrastructure? What was gonna be the overall budget? They decided to just push this out to the world. Guys, you gotta have a budget for whatever it is, your concept, your idea, or your business. You gotta know your numbers and you gotta stick to them if you wanna survive. They didn't even think about anything like the infrastructure, the crew, the food, the accommodation, all the back play into making this festival act actually work. So the lesson to get out of this is, even in your early stages as a business, or even in the early stages of an idea that you're working through entrepreneurially, you've gotta figure out the numbers. You gotta do your best to figure out the numbers. They don't need to be 100% exact on, but just get a ballpark range. That way you know what your burn rate is. You know how long you can continue this idea before you hit zero. So the fifth lesson is you've got to have a plan. This festival was an absolute train wreck from the beginning because there was no plan in place. Let me give you a little perspective of the timeline of this entire fire festival. Billy had the idea in October 2016. He launched tickets December 2016. Then he set the event for April and May. That only gave him six months to get this entire thing together on an island that has zero infrastructure. What was he thinking? I, I have no clue, but my first thing is he didn't design a plan at all because if he would have had a plan, he would have realized that that timeline was impossible to complete. For example, guys, Coachella, those planners take anywhere from nine to 12 months to get that thing off the ground before the first concert opens at Coachella. So you've gotta have a plan for your business. And I advise you to check out the Business Model Canvas online. You can find all kinds of templates everywhere if you just type in Business Model Canvas. Helps you do is condense the main elements of your business strategy to one page. And if done right, the template will actually save you money and time. It'll help you create a backbone or a structure to your business. And the plan can be fluid, guys. Just because you write a plan down and pin doesn't mean you can't change it. So over time and with feedback as you get it from customers, you'll learn different aspects of your business that you need to pivot or change. Um, and that's totally fine but at least have some kind of structure, some kind of backbone or skeleton to your idea. And that will actually help you grow this concept or grow the business that you have in mind. The sixth lesson, guys, is know when to fold. Billy, in this example, had every chance to get out. He had every chance to call the thing off, to push it to a further date, but he didn't. And it was like watching a ship sink. Uh, you think the captain at the helm would say, hey, we're sinking, we need to plug this up but he didn't. So the thing to learn here is entrepreneurs have to learn when to kill their babies. That's a hard thing to do. It's a really hard thing for entrepreneurs to do. Probably the hardest thing an entrepreneur will ever have to do is kill their own idea. But guys, save yourself the pain, save yourself the time, save yourself the money of going down a path that leads nowhere, a path that's just gonna drag you down to financial ruin. And be aware and be honest with yourself and with your partners if an idea is really not that great um, or if the idea has too many holes in it. Be honest with yourself, kill that idea, move on, find a better idea, and there's millions of ideas out there, so don't get stuck on just 
one idea or one way of doing things. So the seventh lesson to come out of this is know your partners. In hindsight, after you watch these documentaries, it's easy to see that you know, Billy McFarland's obviously a scam artist and he's really good at it. He swindled investors, customers, partners out of their money. But the thing is you watch this is, why didn't Ja Rule or any of his other partners or any of the other investors giving him money really take a look at who Billy McFarland was? Really poke around and see what the feedback was on people who had already worked with him. If they would have done this, they would have seen that Billy McFarland actually had a track record with Magnesius, his first startup, had pretty bad reviews, it had all kinds of crap going on, but no one really checked into that. They just gave the man the money because he painted this vision for them. So really know who your partners are. The lesson over here is do your research on your potential partners um, because if they go down, they're gonna likely drag you down and then they're gonna drag the company down with them. So don't put yourself at risk, don't put your startup at risk, Go ahead, check these people out. Learn who are they, you know? Who are they when they're not in a business environment? Check out what previous people they've worked with. You know, ask around about who knows this person and what their habits kind of are like. Get to really know this person before going into business with them. And probably the biggest advice I can give for you if you're gonna partner with someone is always make sure you consult with a legal professional and helping you structure your business, making sure you get the partnership down, get it in a contract, because the nicest guy in the end can screw you over. So make sure you have all that down, guys. The eighth and final lesson of the Fire Festival that an entrepreneur can learn is, as a leader, learn to listen. So many people in Billy's team told them, it wasn't gonna work. They told them that the timeline was off. Crews on the ground, construction crews, said the infrastructure wasn't gonna be built. Billy had people like Mr. Levy, who was a veteran event producer, come in, look at the situation and say, there's no way we can pull this off in a month. He told them that they should push it to the next year, reach out to the customers, let them know what's going on. But Billy and those guys, they thought that they could really pull it off for whatever reason. They thought they could motivate the crews, get people really amped up, they could build all these tents, do all this stuff. Why didn't he listen to the experts? Why didn't he listen to the team around him? This is, this is what's crazy. Here's the response that they got after hearing all this feedback about how it wasn't gonna work. They said, let's do it and be legends, man. Right, just pushed all everyone else's concerns to the side and said, I'm gonna do this and pull this off, which obviously they became legends, but for the wrong reason. So the lesson here is a leader's gotta be able to find a balance, okay? A balance between inspiring his team and also knowing when to hit the brakes and slow down on things and make some revisions. So remember what Michael Dell said earlier, the quote that I said, which was, try never to be the smartest person in the room. And if you are, I suggest you invite smarter people or find a different room. You probably aren't right nine out of 10 of the times, guys. Listen to your team that's on the ground, that's interacting with your customers, that's interacting with your product. Listen to the feedback that they're giving you. And it's your job as a leader then to take that feedback from your team, absorb it, and then create a plan of action to go after you know whatever barriers in front of you and to overcome that. Guys, I hope you found this video interesting. All the lessons that you can pull out as an entrepreneur from a failure like fire festival we'll do more of these videos as they come up we'll do some more case study videos we've got a lot on gopro and all kinds of companies that we'd love to talk to you guys about and things that you can learn as a result of their mistakes or even some of their successes so guys if you haven't already make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can see those videos as they roll out to you guys we look forward to seeing you guys again see ya